We redeem the time because the days are evil. Girl, you are precious. You are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. As at some point we grow to become, to become a good entrepreneur, to become a good speaker, to become a good preacher, to become a good journalist, to become a good father, to become a good mother, to become a good business entrepreneur, to become a good manager, we all grow to become. May the Lord give you grace that you will succeed in the test of life as you look forward to becoming. So I believe today you are going to wake up as a Christian. You are going to wake up and do something. The little that you have, you make use of it to bring honor and glory to the Lord. Praise and honor to our Heavenly Father that has blessed us again to fellowship with Him and with you through His Word. I want to thank God for you and me, for you all, all uh, mostly because you have taken your time every day just to listen to us speaking and listen to us sharing the Word of God with you. God bless you so much. May God remember that diligence that commitment, that diligence and commitment to listen from us. The Lord keep you and the Lord sustain you. This is Lillian uh, from Saints Alive Center, Kariobangi South, serving under Reverend Josephine Mongania. Welcome, uh, stay tuned and the Lord is going to bless us. Today I want us to share a little bit of an elementary topic. Uh, they call it, they call them the topics of the foundation. It is good for somebody to go back to the foundation, especially in the Christian doctrine. It is very good that sometimes you remember to go back to the elementary teachings and the Lord shall build you up. I want us to talk about the spiritual exercises that promote growth in the life of a believer. Spiritual exercises that promote growth in the life of a believer. Just like your body needs exercise, just like your body needs that you walk around, that you just, just don't sit down doing nothing, that you get busy so that your circulatory system, uh, your breathing system, and any other system can work effectively. Therefore, a Christian life needs some exercises. The Bible says somewhere that uh, just like you require, just like you do other, other, other exercises, you need to do these spiritual exercises. They are very important. And I want you to know that man is made up of three areas, body, spirit, and soul. I know you know how to take care of your body. You drink enough water. You take enough food, nutritious foods, the balanced diet. You know how to balance your meal. That is good. But there comes a place in, in the life of a believer that sometimes you need to forget about this body and, and make sure that you take care of your spiritual man body spirit and soul this spirit it is the one that inherits the kingdom of god this spirit is the one that takes uh, that uh, that uh, consumes the word of god this spirit is the one that does the will of god therefore there needs to be a lot of care a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of scrutiny of how you take care of your spirit man and now i want us to share about the spiritual exercises that when you do or when you involve yourself into will contribute to your growth and to your multiplication in in the kingdom of our God. It is very important to cultivate and water our spiritual lives. I repeat, it is very important that you and me, my brother, my sister, that you cultivate and water your spiritual life. It is high time that we come out of carelessness. Yes, 
you have received salvation. But we don't stop there. There are steps that we have to take so that we can reach the fullness of our salvation. That, that's, uh, so that we can build the capacity of God, the capacity to carry the purposes of God, the, capac uh, the capacity to be the visionaries, to be the missionaries that we want to be. We cannot be uh, uh, the missionaries that God wants us to be if we don't take care of our spiritual lives. And I want us to share the word of God from the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 10. 2 Peter chapter 5 verse chapter 1 verse 5 to 10. The Bible says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is short-sighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from all his past sins. The Bible talks of a kind of growth that are after, go, after godliness, add knowledge. From knowledge, self-control. From self-control, perseverance. From perseverance, godliness. From godliness, brotherly kindness. From brotherly kindness, love. If you possess all these qualities, the Bible says, in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. When you choose to grow, when you take care of your spirit man, you will be effective and you will be productive. But when you don't take care of your spirit man, you will be ineffective and unproductive. And I am here to make sure that from today, you take these steps that uh, after some times, men and women will begin to see some element of growth in you. Growth is a choice. Growth of us, a man in the spiritual realm is a choice. If you decide to grow and take these steps, you will grow. If you refuse to take these steps, then you will remain there, a dwarf in the things of God, a dwarf in the purposes of God. Somebody who does not know how to choose right from wrong, somebody who is just taken away by the elementary teachings of this world, by the philosophies of men, it is time that God has to build our lives by our own decision that we want to grow and the Lord shall bless us. You will be effective and you will be productive. The Bible talks of bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You cannot bear them if you do not choose to take these steps and grow in God. I want us to read the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 6, 7 and then 9 and 10. Colossians chapter 2. I want us to read the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, um, so then, just as, have you re as you have received Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you are taught and overflowing with thanks thankfulness. I repeat, so then as you have received Jesus Christ as Lord, continue in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you are, as you are taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Continue in him, rooted and built up in him, it means that after receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, you don't remain there. You don't just remain there. That me, I'm born again, I'm going to heaven. Nothing like that. You have, there are things that you have to do for you to be counted as somebody who is rooted up in him. 
who is strong in the Lord. There are things that you have to do for you to be rooted and to be strengthened in the Lord. I want you to know, my brothers, my sisters, the life of salvation is not a joke. There are battles here and there. There are wars here and there. There are disappointments here and there. Woe unto somebody who has chosen not to grow because when these things come, you will be swept away. When these things come, when these temptations come, you will fall into them. But blessed be the name of the Lord that has given us all spiritual blessing and physical blessing that we may learn today of the spiritual acts exercises that we need to engage into for us to grow in the things of the spirit. The Bible says in verse 9 and 10, For in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness of Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him you are circumcised, in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with circumcision done by the handsome men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised in, with him through the faith in the power of God who raised you from the dead. It is time to get rooted in the purposes of God, rooted and built up in him so that you may not be taken captive by the hollow teachings and deceptive philosophy of the traditions of men. Uh, there is somebody who talked to me uh, some days back. This person asked me, I know you are coming from preaching. I know you have come from the church. I know you are a pastor. Do you know the Bible condemns, the Bible says that women should not stand on the altar. Yes. These are elementary teachings. These are philosophies of men. These are, things, they, these are people who have chosen to take the scriptures just, uh, just haphazardly. It is time to know how to dig deep in the things of God. Somebody told me that women are not supposed to stand on the altar. Yes, at their days you need to miss the, to stand in the altar because maybe you are in your menses. No, the Bible says that we are, we were made. The Bible says that when the curtain of the temple was torn into two, everybody was given access into the presence of God. Therefore, nobody should stop a woman from standing on the altar because when Jesus died, when Jesus died, and that and the curtain of the temple was torn the bible says everybody can access the presence of god the lord is so loving the lord cares and the lord wants to entrust you with his will and with his purpose i want us now to see one by one what are these spiritual exercises that when you engage in as a youth when you engage in as a man or as a woman, you will grow in the things of God. I know we are living in very terrible times. People are doing jobs that they have never done. I have seen uh, secondary school madams. I have seen them selling uji. I have seen them t uh, selling tea, uh, 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 hawking tea. It is not very easy. But I want to thank God because if you are rooted in the will of God, you will understand the times we are living in. You will understand that it happens for a reason and for a season. And very soon, God will take us out of all this. Number one thing that I want us to dig deep into that will make you grow. Number one is the word of God. Is the word of God. How many times do you read the word of God? How many times do you listen to the word of God? How many times do you meditate upon the word of God? Some people depended on, on Sunday services for them to listen and even to hear the word of God. But there are no Sunday services now for, for almost four months. It is not happening. What are you doing? My brother, my sister, it is time that the word of God is written in your heart and in your mind and it just ha it, it doesn't just happen like that you have to take time and read you have to take time and listen 
you have to take time and meditate on that word so that it is deep and deeper within you. The Bible says faith that does, come by, does not come anyhow, but it comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. It is not done, it, is, it does not happen once. It happens daily when you listen and you listen and you hear and you preach it also. When, when you do that, you grow in the will of God. It is time, my men and women of God, that we should not be empty. That when a, a, an a, an believer comes to you with a question, you tell him, please go to my pastor. No, it is time that you have to have the scriptures in your mind and in your spirit. And when you do that, my brother, your temptations will be, ja will, will be nothing in the name of Jesus. The word of God should dwell in you richly. The Bible says in the book of Col uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, that let the word go of God dwell in in you richly as you teach and admonish one another let the word of god dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another hallelujah let that word dwell in you read it run with it eat that word of god in the name of jesus if you cannot find time in the day you can find time at night you don't have to sleep the entire night you can choose that i will read the word of god for two hours and when you do that that word will never come out of you i remember in the days when you were in school you could put water in a basin and they put your your feet in the basin so that you can read longer my brother my sisters we can do that for our god we can sit down and read the word of god and even make sure that we don't sleep while reading this word and when we do that we are growing the bible continues to say that as you teach one another it means that sometimes you may not be able to stand on the altar, but there should be time, maybe as a family, that you can sit and share the word of God. And remember, when you share the word of God with somebody, it remains in you forever and ever. It doesn't come out. So the Lord is very much concerned about our growth in him. I want us to read the book of uh, first Peter chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. The Bible says like newborn babes crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. I repeat like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Desire the word of God desire the word of god desire to listen to the word of god if there is chance to listen to to come to church to listen to the word of god never miss it for maria never miss it for selena never miss it for a soap opera come and be grounded in the word of god come and be rooted in the word of god come and be edified in the word of god in the name of jesus the Bible says that desire spiritual milk so that you may grow up in your salvation. Salvation is about growth. It is about development. It is not a one day thing. It is a forever thing. It is a process. When you remain there, there is some change that takes place in your life. There is transformation. There is a conformation to the will of God that takes place in your life. Choose to hear. Choose to listen. Choose to, to speak even the word of God and the Lord will bless you. Number two, prayer. Prayer. And according to me, Yes, prayer is communication. It is communion with God. But according to me, Lillian, prayer is the kitchen where ministries are cooked. Prayer is the kitchen where preachings are cooked. Prayer is a kitchen where things are cooked. Look at men and women of prayer. Even in, the, in our days right now, you can see 
they are shaking the world. They are shaking the nations. People that have learned, when you, when you are a, a man of prayer, it, you show God that you totally depend on him. You don't depend on yourself. You don't depend on your salary. You don't depend on your business. You depend on him. It is time to seek the Lord in prayer, my brother. Where, whoever you spend time with, you look like that person. The longer you stay with God, the longer you take in the presence of God, my brother, you will begin to look like him. I have seen people who have stayed in marriage. After some times, they begin to look like one another. Remember, these people came from very far, somebody from another county, another one maybe from another nation. And they begin to look like one another. How about we spend time with God, my brother? We begin to talk like him. We begin to talk sense like our God. Let us choose to spend time in the kitchen of our God. Let us choose to spend time in the upper room, seeking the face of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus spoke to his disciples and he told them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. My brothers, my sisters, if you start a day in prayer, in the kitchen of God, which is prayer, let me tell you, it is very difficult to fall into the temptation of the enemy. It is very difficult to get just angry at anybody. Me, there are times I spend, sometimes I go before God when I am I'm very hurt. Somebody has hurt me. I wake up or I stand from my prayer, having forgiven that person. I feel a, a lot of peace. My brother, my sisters, if you cannot pray, there is something you are missing. There are a lot of things, a lot of joy you are missing that only comes uh, when you learn to kneel and to seek the face of God. Prayer is the key of your life. Prayer should be the food of your life. Prayer should be your breakfast, should be your lunch, should be your dinner in the name of Jesus. I'm not talking of religious prayers where we just pray for food. I am, pray I am talking of prayer when you can spend one hour Two hours, three hours in the presence of God. My brother, my sister, when you come out of that place, you don't come out the same again. You come transformed, changed, and renewed. Change does not just come. It comes on our knees. And the Lord will increase our lives. The Lord will bless our lives. Number three, witnessing or testifying. Witnessing. We are living in days when believers have become mute. They have decided to muzzle their mouths. They have decided to close their mouths. Men and women have decided that we are not going to speak. We cannot give a testimony because we don't see any result of our commitment to God. We cannot see any result of our devotion to God. My brother, my sister, the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Give a testimony. Maybe you were born again 10 years ago. There is somebody who has been, uh, ju who was just born again yesterday. If you cannot practice saying that Lord Jesus is my savior, my brother, my sister, the Bible says that if we fear to acknowledge Jesus before men, he will be afraid even to acknowledge us before God. It is that dangerous. It is very important that you tell people, I am born again. I am a kingdom candidate. I am going to heaven. And even uh, now, if you receive Jesus, you can become a candidate of heaven in the name of Jesus. 
They defeated him by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb. Give a testimony, my brother. I remember somebody gave us a testimony of a sister who was suffering goita and goita kept on growing. But every day, every Sunday, she used to stand up in the church and telling people that I thank God my goita is, dis is disappearing. My goita is going. But one day, because of her persistence, God made sure that in the night, or on a Saturday night, she slept, and that goita burst. And the following day, she went and told them, it is done. My brother, my sisters, let us testify. Let us give a testimony. Let us witness. Let us tell people of the, of the word of God, of what God can do in their lives. And when we do that, we become stronger and stronger. Let us not, call, let us not uh, close our mouths. Let us not be muzzled by the things that are happening. If tell the world that even with the corona, even with everything that is happening, Jesus is to Lord. Jesus is still Savior and the Lord will bless us. I want us to read the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. I'm just about to wind up. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. The Bible says, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to re reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. I repeat, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. My brothers, we have known Christ so that we may know, make Christ known to others. And when we make him known to others, these people will also be teachers like us. We may not be the best teacher, but when we do that, we are getting, we are growing. We are growing our roots deeper and our fruits are being seen in the entire world in the name of Jesus. That the things you have heard me talk about, make sure you entrust to other people. Witness, share the word of God. When you don't share uh, so, some people, rem uh, they remain, they say that I cannot share. If I share what I have today, what will I share tomorrow? Let me tell you, the more you release, the more you receive. The more you release, the more you receive. And the more you keep quiet, the more you remain the same. May the Lord make you a witness. May the Lord make you a person who is able to share the love of God with others, to share the scriptures with others, to share the testimonies that the Lord has done in our lives with others. The Bible says whoever has a son has a testimony. This son is Jesus. If you have Jesus, my brother, my sisters, there are things he has done in your life. Whether you refuse it or you accept it, there are things he has done. You can count them one, two, up to ten that Jehovah has done in your life in the name of Jesus. Share with others and the Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless your life. Number four, fellowship. Number four, uh, the fourth spiritual exercise is fellowship. Remember, I'm talking about the spiritual exercises that promote growth in the life of a believer. And I have talked about the word of God. I've spoken about prayer. I've spoken about sharing, witnessing, or uh, testifying. And now I'm in number four, which is fellowship. And fellowship, is spiritual warmth. Fellowship is spiritual warmth. Nobody can grow alone. No one is an island. You need others to grow. Nobody has reached the peak of growth. Even the greatest men of God in the land of Kenya or in the globe are still growing. Today you meet something that uh, makes you grow. Tomorrow you meet another thing that takes you higher in the things of God. My brother, my sister, you are not an island. After everything is over, maybe you, you, you used to say, I can grow alone or I can grow on the TV 
on the YouTube. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, despise not the gathering together of believers. Why? Because if you are, if you go there, you'll hear somebody's testimony of a challenge is going through, and you'll say, "Mine, mine is small. Mine is not like the other." And that is why God and Jesus is telling us to remember to come to fellowship. Do not, uh, do not forsake the gathering together of brothers. Do not be proud so that you cannot attend a fellowship. Hey, do not be proud that you, you feel you don't fit in somebody's house for a fellowship. Do not be proud. Do not be proud, my brother. Do not be proud. God is commanding us through the servant of God that we should not forsake the gathering together of believers. Why? Because one stick cannot light fire. It cannot. It cannot light fire. Or one, one uh, like a stove. When a stove has been off for so long, Flies can just come and stay on the stove. But when the fire is lit, when the fire is sparkling, a fly cannot stay there. My brother, my sister, if you want to overcome sin, if you want to overcome your challenges, learn to fellowship with others. Now it is not happening, but tomorrow it will happen. We will still come together and fellowship with others. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Acts chapter 2. Verse 42, the Bible says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I repeat again, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. If the apostles could do that, people whose shades could heal the sick. People whose handkerchiefs could heal the sick, the paralyzed, could stand. Remember they, uh, like uh, Peter and James, one day they were, walk, they were coming uh, to, uh, to church at the time, for, or a time of prayer, and somebody begging at the gate told them, yeah, give me something. Peter told them, silver and gold we do not have, but what we have, we give you. Remember, those people could still go for fellowship. They could still break bread. My brother, who are you? Who are you? Maybe you are educated. That education is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, nothing is new under the sun. Paul was a learned man. Dr. Luke was a doctor. He, he was a qualified doctor. Who are you, my brother? You can still humble yourself and get into the house uh, of, of a believer and fellowship together with them. Drink that tea. Fellowship, break that bread, eat that food that you cannot eat in your house, and the Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you. Number last, I want us to, uh, another spiritual exercise is holiness. Holiness. The Bible says with the holiness, without holiness, no one can see God. Without holiness, no one can see God. And there is a cry in the spirit that says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, it is time to run away from sin. Remember Joseph, when the wife of Potiphar wanted to sin with her, with him. The Bible says that Joseph chose to run away. Run away from sin. Run away from temptation. There are things you can try to avoid, my brother. There are things we can avoid. And when we avoid them, our growth, is, uh, our, our growth in the spirit becomes uh, evident in our lives in the name of Jesus. Try to be holy. Try to remain blameless. In the name of Jesus. I know it is not easy. 
I know people could even want to smear mad on you. They would want even to speak lies about you. Let me tell you, it is better they speak something you have not done rather than they speak what you have done. People fear people uh, mentioning their names in sin. If you don't want your name to be mentioned, try to avoid sin. Try to avoid fornication. Try to avoid stealing. There are the people steal in different ways. You can steal from a company. Eh? And you can, maybe for some time, you will not be uh, found. But there is a day. Remember, the 40 days of a thief will come. My brother, my sister, you can keep yourself. You can try and be holy for God. Remember, Jesus is coming back for a bride, a bride without blemish, a bride that is spotless. Try to become, to be spotless. Uh, try to become blemishless in the name of Jesus and the Lord will keep you and the Lord will sustain you. Remember my brother, my sister, when you remain, when you try and you become holy in some, in word, in speech, in action, let me tell you, your growth is evident and you are becoming stronger and stronger with God. Remember you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit does not live in a dirty place. He doesn't live in a dirty place where lies are easy, where things are happening. No, the Holy Ghost comes to dwell with somebody who is ready to be purified of him, to walk worthy of his calling. You don't re speak, uh, you don't preach wine, water and you drink wine. No, it is time, my brothers, my sisters, that we choose to remain on the right path and the Lord will bless you. We are living in days where sin is just on the door, on, on your doorstep. Things are happening. Even things that you are seeing maybe could be, uh, uh, they could be doing some harm in your spirit, man. But my brother, my sister, you can choose to remain holy. And when an opportunity comes and you fall into a temptation, remember to repent. Don't pile up your sins. Don't pile up those offenses. Repent repent and turn away from them and the Lord will bless you. I want us to finish with the book of John, 1st John chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. 1st John chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. The Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all our sins. The Bible says, I repeat, uh, verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. It means that if God is in, in our lives, there is no, there should be, no kind of darkness in your life. I know that you could be struggling with some sins. Everybody has something he's struggling with. Give yourselves to the Lord. Launch deep into prayer and that thing will come out. If it is hunger, if it is lying, if it is a, a, unfaithfulness, infidelity in marriage, if you are an, you are, you, you are, your life uh, is full of unfaithfulness of some kind, you can come out of it. You can come out of it if you desire and if you choose to come out of it, God will make sure that you come out of it. I've read verse 5, verse 6 says, If we claim we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in truth. If we claim we have fellowship in him, yet we walk in sin, that is, we lie and do not live in the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus' his son purifies us from all uncleanliness. My brothers, my sisters, it is that clear and it is that simple. If we claim to walk in light and we walk in darkness in secret, my brothers, my sisters, we do not have fellowship with him. But when we choose to walk in the light, when your yes is yes 
and the not no or, or not yes and a half. When you are yes, it's yes. When your truth is plain truth with nothing added in it, God will come to your rescue. God will come to your deliverance. My brothers, my sisters, these are the spiritual exercises that when you engage into, will promote your growth in Christ. I, I began by saying that I am talking about an elementary topic which is very important in the life of every believer. My brother, my sisters, your life can grow. You can come out of being a baby. You can come out of being uh, just uh, swayed or tossed by any doctrine, any teaching. Eh? When they are saying that you come to church naked or you come to church without your bras, that is a, a wrong teaching. Eh? When you are, you are grown or when you have chosen to grow in God, you can say no to such. But when you are a baby, you will begin to go to church without some things because uh, somebody told you. When they tell you that come to our church and we will give you, we will read your name, whether your name is in the book of life, nobody, nobody should tell you whether your name. You, if you are born again, you know you are born again. And if you are a sinner, you can choose to repent and begin to take these steps for you to grow in the knowledge of our God. The Lord loves you so much. The Lord cares for you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Make sure in whatever you are going through, Christ has his part in your life. In your hours, divide your hours very well. We have 24 hours. Make sure you give God a tithe of his time in prayer, in the word of God, in fellowship, in holiness, and in witnessing the word of God. God bless you so much. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for my brothers. I want to thank you for my sisters, Lord. They have heard your word that they need to grow. In whatever level they are, they need to come to another level for your glory. I pray in Jesus' name that you put this desire, this determination, this zeal, this commitment, my Lord, to fulfill your will in the lives of your people. Just like David says that the zeal of your house, the zeal of your presence consumes me. Let, ma uh, any, let a man and a woman decide that the zeal for your will and the zeal of your purpose will consume them Jehovah. We bless you and we honor you. We speak peace in, in every situation in our lives. We bless your name and it is in Jesus' name that we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. God bless you so much. Shalom, shalom. This place is called Saints Alive Church and in Saints Alive Church God has given us a burden to do the work of the ministry. Right now we are worshipping in a wooden church but very soon we are coming up with a big cathedral, but it's a cathedral that will be built out of the sacrifices and offerings that are given by the hands of the people, of which you can be one amongst them to be able to contribute so that we can be able to build God a good house while they worship Him. And maybe not for us to worship in it, but we can make a good place and a good cathedral where other generations will come and have a place to worship God in. And so your contributions today means a lot, means a lot to the forthcoming generation. Me and you, we have lived enough, but there are people who are not yet born, but only to worship God, because if Jesus dies, we yet have more years to go. And so let us be vigilant and be strong in preaching the word of God. I want to leave you with the blessings of the Lord, and I want God to bless you wherever you will be, because I always pray for you, for the nation and every child of God. May God bless you, we will meet again. You are welcome to St. Alive Church. It's a ministry in Nairobi, Kariban South, where we minister the gospel in truth and the spirit. God bless you.